Hello and welcome to the Football Revolution. I'm your host, Geo. Great to have your company. Happy Orthodox Easter to everybody celebrating it. And to my co-host, VIG, Carlo Pasha. Hello, Pasca, yeah. Pasca. 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 To your mate. You've done well. I've very done good. okay. Yeah, very good. <laughs> but I didn't know if good it, start. I didn't know if it was going to mean that uh, I'm dead man walking or if it meant happy Orthodox Easter to you, but I thought I'd at least have a crack out of respect Could to you and all those uh, people who are celebrating Orthodox Easter. Could have been anything, but you nailed it. Very good. <laughs> Mate, this is our first week doing the full show in video, so pretty exciting, and we're hoping that uh, all the listeners enjoy it. Good times, yeah. Hopefully they do. Hopefully they don't uh, switch off once they see our faces. And look, yeah, probably, they, maybe sometimes they say you've only got a face for radio, right? But I think uh, definitely you, you, you're way above that. But uh, look, before we get any questions about, uh, you know, only having two of the Sydney jerseys in the background, we are based in Sydney, but uh, we're more than happy to put up any of the jerseys in our backgrounds. Send if, them up. If they send them in. You send them send in. Them up. I don't mind if it's the, it could be the Phoenix, it can be the Glory, it can be the Mariners, it could be anybody. Just send them in to us. We'll take any. Mate, uh, thank you to all the brave men and women uh, who have protected our amazing country and allow us to live this fantastic lifestyle that we do. Um, you know, today is Anzac Day and we wish everybody a happy Anzac Day. And uh, yeah, look, there's there's very few better days in the calendar than uh, celebrating the amazing people that you know fought for us. Yeah, definitely. Um, we wouldn't be here without them. So thank you very much. And um, we, we show our utmost respect to them. Yeah, definitely. Seven games to review in our Revolution Roundup, but before we get into that, the AFC Champions League. So Melbourne City sits second in Group G with two wins and two draws, while Sydney are struggling, and they've got they're sitting in third, four points behind uh, Nemesis Kevin Muscat's uh, Yokohama. That they they play uh, pretty much <laughs> now. It could right be, now, it could yeah. be right now while we're recording the show, and it's a must win definitely for the Sky Blues. Yeah, Sydney have to win to to stay in the hunt. Um, but Melbourne City are flying at the moment, aren't they? Two two wins. Um, I look. I, I think that m- uh, maybe not flying, but but they're doing they're doing quite well. I think. Oh look, they've got a, a fantastic playing roster, but I think that uh, they will be disappointed that they let at least one of those two games go. The they, sh- they should, yeah. yeah. Rather than sitting in second, I think that they at this stage they would like to have been sitting in first. Yep. But uh, for their first campaign, you just got to be happy yeah, with look, sitting in second and in a position where they can strike. If if they get through through the group stage, um, we know the players they have at their disposal, uh, the likes of Lecky, Nabu, McLaren. Um, when fully fit and, and all playing, um, you know, they, they hopefully they can go deep into the competition. So no player escape room this week, but plenty of star power with uh, Big Roy O, Roy O'Donovan in the lineup. Big Roy O, yeah, firing the goals in for Sydney Olympics. So. And making us look good too. He always does. <laughs> so a quick snapshot of the uh, – well, so as we said, Sydney Olympics main man and our good friend is back in the house with his segment in the know with Roy O. And a uh, quick snapshot of the table. So City currently sitting at 46, Western United sitting at 44, Victory at 42, uh, Adelaide in fourth, 37, Phoenix 36, and rounding out the top six, the Mariners, who have jumped in uh, on 33. So they've been knocking on the door for a few weeks now, but finally uh, their hard work and uh, everything's paid off for them. They're now sitting in the six. Just outside the top six are the Bulls, who had two losses on the weekend, which is very disappointing for them, sitting on 32. Sydney, who are away with their Asian Champions League campaign on 31. And the Jets, who I think have blown their lines and their chances of playing final football on 25. Uh, Western United, Phoenix and Mariners, all with a game in hand out of those teams, sitting uh, just inside the the six. So, um, look, an opportunity for them to put a bit of daylight between them and the team sitting 7th, 8th and ninth, who are trying to chase them down. Yeah, definitely. And a huge game this weekend, uh, Western United and the Mariners, because that affects both both ends of the six. Um, if West United can win, they, they potentially go ahead Melbourne, uh, above Melbourne City uh, to 47 points. And if uh, Central Coast lose, that keeps MacArthur and Sydney in the hunt. Yeah, look, I think there's some really interesting clashes this weekend. But uh, just before we do, my regular, and this is the first time we do it on video, so my wrap for the week, uh, maybe I can do an overlay of M&M or something to uh, spice this up a bit, little bit, take but uh, sticking with that. Victory missed their chance to take second spot. Central Coast Mariners are running hot. Phoenix and Adelaide get the job done. And two losses for the Bulls it was not much fun. Not much fun at all. So, yeah, not fun. Hey, uh, we, we'll touch on that in this Revolution Roundup. So it's now time for our Revolution Roundup. The first game of the uh, the round was on the Tuesday, which was uh, Western United and the Bulls. Western United, Western United ran out 2-0 winners. Western United just know how to win at the moment. Yeah, and uh, Western United inflicted more pain on, uh, on MacArthur. <laughs> they most certainly did. So, um, yeah, look, the way they set up, uh, the way Aloisi's has got Western United set up, um, they're just h- very hard to break down. Um, yes, they, they, they don't always have a uh, majority possession of the ball, but when you've got a defense like that, that's solid, they've got their foundations and then they can, they can counter and they've got some quality up front and, and some pace. So 
Um, you know, di- very disappointing for MacArthur. A big week, which which could have set their season up, um, but they've they've lost twice to the two Melbourne teams in West United and, and Victory. Curdo made some fine saves, but the human force field, our friend Jamie Young, is on another planet. He is. He has pulled yeah. off some saves. So what a, what a signing he's been this season. That's why we call him the human force field. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, look, he's unbelievable, and you know, like I said, I don't think there was much between the teams except for. Uh, Western United took their chances. When I say chances, they took one early in the game, a well-taken volley by Connor Payne. And then when uh, uh, the Bulls were pushing... Mariapa got sent off as well. Yeah, Mariapa got sent off, but when they were pushing for the equaliser, uh, it allowed Prijevic to have a breakaway and kick it into an empty net. So really, they took their one chance up until late in the game. But the difference besides taking that one chance was Jamie Young. Yeah, definitely, definitely. What and a performance from him. And he's, he's, a Aloisi, he's a machine. Aloisi must be sitting there saying to himself, thank God I went and chased yeah. a guy who basically between the sticks is just almost impossible he, to he must. He must have coached him when he was at Brisbane. Is that is that correct? I, I, I would I say so. the relationship has stemmed back from their time when they were at yeah. uh, Brisbane together. But yeah. uh, look, it goes to show you can have all the, the best players in the world on the pitch, but uh, in between the sticks, if you don't have a, a absolute superstar, then you can concede poor goals and then you end up dropping points left, right and centre. Yeah, 100%. So moving on to the second game, I think it was the uh, the only game on the Wednesday. It was between the Wanderers and the Jets, won by the home team, the Western Sydney Wanderers 3-2. Wanderers crashed Jets' hopes of finals football. For me, I think mathematically they're still in contention and uh, you know they could pinch, pinch one of those final spots. For, but for me, I think the Wanderers just uh, slammed the door shut on them at the moment. They, uh, the Jets don't defend their goal like their life depends on it. And the top teams do. If you want to win stuff and you want to be at the right end of the table, you need to make sure that, like I said, you do everything you, you can to goals. defend. And you and you can't you can't go down three 0 in a football and game not, and not regularly. Yeah, you correct. Know, down three 0 in the first half, Wanderers just blew them off the park. Um, you know they, they didn't play incredible football, but um, Newcastle just very frail at the back. Um, you know, <sighs> what else can you say? Newcastle had a. We talk about Macarthur having a bad week, but. Newcastle have had just as bad a week, um, you know, two losses when the season's on the line um, and the way the, those losses came about, just not a great week for them. Yeah, look, when they play, they, they're excellent in attack. But, uh, you know, I think I've said this before, there's two parts of football, attacking and defending. Their defending is just not up to scratch at the moment. And so when you said there's three goals down, it's just too much to recover as good as your attacking look, options are. They fought are. hard in the second half to, to get two goals back, but... They never really looked like winning that football game. Yeah, but is that really on the Jets to say, okay, it was a great fight back? Or was that why Western Sydney Wanderers aren't in the 60s year either? Because they led 3 0 and almost threw the game away. So they're they're where they are. Those teams are are exactly where they should be, yeah. Based on, based on that performance, I'd say so. Yep. So moving into the only Friday game, which was between uh, the Bulls hosting uh, Melbourne Victory. Uh, the team from Melbourne ran out 4-1 winners. Uh, Victory keep the heat on City, who are currently away with the AFC Champions, uh, Champions League duty. Popper's men just sharper. Um, they did have some luck. There was yeah, a penalty. Is. There was a deflected goal and a disallowed goal for the Bulls. Yeah. But at the moment, I think that just reflects how both teams are travelling. When you're going well and things are set up well, you get a bit of luck. And when you t- when your luck's out and your performances are out, you just don't get anything go your way. Yeah, hundred percent. And and the score line's a bit deceiving. I think um, I think Macarthur probably deserves something out of the football match. I think the disallowed goal to Jovanovic. I was going to say that's um, a huge turning point in the sixty third turn- minute. Turning point. That just and they flagged for offside. And to be honest, as much as I, I I'm a Victory fan, it was very infuriating for me because and it took so long as well. Yeah, but he, ha- take four minutes but he had like- so they were both in line except his leg was outstretched. Now, yeah. okay, his leg was outstretched. There's no advantage because he was actually off balance. His leg was just stretched out. He, he's running back that way. It, gi- but it, his it leg gives him is- no. It gives him yeah. no advantage. So why, yeah. in God's name, do you call that for offside? When yeah. it gave no benefit to the oh Bulls, no. and it should have been two-two. I oh know, but by the letter of the law, it's, oh yeah, but the letter of the law and, and it's and it's ridiculous. We were speaking about this, but it just that just took the stuffing out of Macarthur, and they were they were completely gone after that, and and Victory just ran away with it. Look, and to make matters worse, then Miranda with a classy f- flick, oh, and then uh, what, a, what a goal! And then Jovanic with his own goal rubbed salt into the wound. So not only did so he not get the two-two, yeah, one chalked off, chalked off, and, and the other and one, and then he scored his own net. Hundred so. <laughs> percent. So unfortunately and for him, I think that would have been his first A League goal as well. Well, look, I think 60 minutes in, things were going okay for him. Yep. And then the last 30 minutes was just an absolute disaster for him. It was like the Rock, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Nothing went right for him in attack or defence. And basically, they ended up uh, handing the game over to victory, who, like I said, weren't uh, at their best. But uh, at the moment, they're just in a, in a sort of form that uh, if the other team doesn't perform, 
they'll take advantage of it. Yeah, definitely. So moving on to, I think it was the first, was it the first of the Saturday games? So, no, it was the only, it was the only Saturday Jets game. Jets Mariners. Yeah, the F3 derby. So with a big win in what the F3 game. derby, the Mariners jump into the top six. I don't know how long it's been. It might, it's been a long time since I've seen the Mariners sitting inside a final spot uh, this season, but totally deserved. Uh, Cummings with another two for his bag full. Moresk and Cool with uh, well-taken goals as well. And, and the Jets again, 3-0 down at, at half time. Um, you know, Moresh has been good. I, I think he's been a, a good signing for Central Coast. Um, Cummings now, all right, he's he's up to I think he's eight goals now. And yeah, and, like and it also affords if you luck the luxury of having Urena start on the bench. Exactly, when you can have him on the bench, absolute and, and class on, like that. Yeah, you, you know, to leave him out of the starting eleven is a, a huge call one, but to um to bring him, you know, to have players like Moresh and, and Cummings, um, you know, makes it that much sweeter. And you've got to sit and smile, right? And whether you're a Mariners fan or not, basically with everything that happened last year and without you know being broken record and repeating it, things didn't go their way in the off-season. Things didn't go their way at the start of the season. But we've continuously said that they've always been in the game, right? They're in every single game, there's been a little yep. flick here or there that turns whether they end up with a win or a draw. They've always been up to their eyeballs in it. And now that they've added Cummings uh, to their side, as well as, you know, a bit more, uh, some of the players have got some more, yes, a bit bit more experience under the the belts. Yeah, they've they've learned a lot Um, throughout the year. So I think, you know, if if any team has learned and grown this year, and utilised that that growth, it's been them. Okay, Raw have shown improvement, Glory would be better for these players getting the runs under their belt, but then actually executing it and using what you've learned this year, this season, not next year or in three years' time. That'd be the Mariners for me. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think the Mariners throughout the whole season they've stuck to their style of play. They've they've come up. Montgomery's come up with a, a certain style that suits their players and enjoyable to and watch. It's good to watch, and they've been consistent each week. And and some weeks it, it works and it goes their way. Some weeks it doesn't. But they haven't, um, you know, they haven't drifted away from that philosophy or that style of play each week. Mm-hmm. And having Birigetti in there, another oh, another another keeper we, we that spoke about him. that wins your games though. So about how important keepers are? I don't, I, look, if this is not a, a signal out, and we have amazing keepers in the league, but you need to make sure it's the right fit for your team. Yeah. You know, there's and no we have, point. we have amazing keepers in the Socceroos squad, but you know, is Birigetti is potentially going to get his chance in that squad as well? Okay, so a couple of, two quick talking points before we move on to the two Sunday games. So Jets um, thought they'd equalised um, three three, but a free kick was awarded for a push in the back. So, soft? Yes. As a defender, yes, I think. Because he did make a bit of a meal of it when he, yeah. went, when he went forward, yeah. right? So, if, if he didn't make a meal of it, it's easier to judge. I know yeah. it was difficult because it, it took a bit of a dive and all that sort of things. Yeah. But it also probably took the stuffing out of the Jets, right? They thought they'd fought back from uh, 3-3. Momentum would have been with them. Yeah, 100%. Instead, we, they go ahead and... Uh, I, can't, I can't remember what minute that was, but... There, there was still a, a bit of chunk in, in there was, the game there was left time, to, but there was time to for the difference, for the Jets know? to go on and yeah. win that game. So, look, you know, unfortunately sometimes in football you don't get those bounces of the ball. you just got to be good enough to still get a result even when, you know, a decision goes against you. Yeah. The other one I want to talk about was uh, Pena. So there's no doubt about his class. This is the second red card he's had in a month. Unnecessary. You can't afford to do without him, and he doesn't need that crap in his game. He's gone over and yeah. trying to put an elbow into somebody – and I, I don't buy it as an accident. He's is gone it? over there. I don't know if he yeah. intentionally went over there to try and put the elbow in him, but he raised the elbow because he was annoyed with what had happened, yeah, and that's just not good enough. He's, he's obviously been very frustrated. You know, they, they get themselves back in the game. It could have been three or Then, um, you know, Mariners <laughs> score in, in stoppage time. I think it was the 91st minute. Uh, lovely finish by Garan Cole. Uh, um, and I think he's just – he's boiled over. He's got that – you know, fiery personality, win at all cost. He, he hates losing, um, and that, that's probably just his the Brazilian coming out in in, in him. Um, you know, we don't, we don't want to see it. We don't we don't need to see it. He's a he's a great player. He's been a great addition to the league. He's been brilliant for Newcastle all season, um, and we want to see him on the pitch every week. Look, for me, you know, and I'm no expert, but uh, my advice to him is don't worry about working on your football in the off-season. Just get your temperament to match your football ability. If you even get close, if your temperament is even close to your football ability, you'll be a world-beater because he's a fantastic player. But that's twice we'll now. sign him up to Headspace or Calm or yeah, one this, of Yeah, this, this is twice. He doesn't need that. And, you know, it's just like I said, it just wrecks maybe, a, a fantastic maybe. player's CV at the moment because it looks like now when you need him, 
if things aren't going his way, he taps out and says, yeah. look, I've had enough. So maybe send him up to Byron Bay for a week or something like that. Maybe he needs it. But uh, moving on to the two Sunday games. So uh, the Phoenix versus the Wanderers. The Phoenix 1-0 uh, winners. Another healthy crowd of 15,000 plus, uh, 15, plus get the result they craved um, this week as Yagarkovic slips up and former coach Rudin sees red. Yeah, it was all, all happening. It was good to see uh, a crowd in Auckland at, at Eden Park. Um, you know, How many chances did they get? I know this is their last game, but they played last week with 20-odd thousand. The game was a bit of a stinker. It's probably the worst that the uh, Phoenix yeah. have played in a, in, a, yeah. in a couple of weeks. Coming off such a, a great high of, of going back home and, and seeing your family yeah, and, and friends. And they're only so loyal, right? Yeah. You can't go to two home games, get smacked twice. So it was yeah. very important they got a result. Yeah. I think probably the right opposition because at the moment, oh. I think the way they played, if it was one of the big teams, Look, I think they would have got punished. If they could have played the Wanderers twice the week before <laughs> and this week, they would have, they would have said, yeah, give it, I think so. give it, give it to us. So, um, yeah, look, Wellington, well-deserved win. Um, it was good to see a nice crowd there in you know tough conditions. It was pretty yeah, much was raining, sloppy. Yeah, raining all yeah. match. Um, but you know, in saying that, the Wanderers almost they almost went ahead, and, and uh, I think it was Bacchus, a, a long shot that almost uh, caught sail off his line. That's called wishful thinking. It was wishful that, thinking, mate, honestly. It was, it was. But you know, if that goes in, the game changes. Oh yeah, look. Um, if you know what, it's same thing. It's like saying, yeah, and, and if this happened, I could have signed with Real Madrid. You know, like it's yep, it's all wishful thinking, mate. It is, it is. But then uh, our, our mate Borley, uh, lovely little one-two with Piscopo, um, cross for Ben Wayne, and it's good to see Ben Wayne uh, scoring lots of goals. Yeah, he's a top kid and a, and a very good player. And it was it was very it was three precious points for the Kiwi side because if you look at the moment. The Bulls have now dropped out the six. You've got Sydney FC who are sitting there because, okay, they haven't been playing, but they had played more games than other teams. So teams, are they're waiting to play the extra games to catch up or either fall behind Sydney. So, look, very important for, for them. I think the big test is for them to put back-to-back performances. They've been a bit hot cold, as we said there, Jekyll and Hyde. So we said it last week, I think, will the real Phoenix please stand up? This week, whatever Ulfak's done the previous weeks after a win, don't do it. Try something new. Take them to well, the they're movies. Fly, they're flying back now, aren't they? Yeah, but take them to the movies. Yeah. Take them to go and see the new... Maybe um, they can take Ugarkovic out for dinner or something when it, they get back. Go, go and see the new you. Fantastic Beast movie. Go and uh, time zone. Anything. Just yeah. don't do whatever you've been doing. If you've been doing Combayars and, and sitting in a room just having chats and, and having coffee for night, don't do it. Do something new. So the uh, the second of the two Sunday games was Adelaide versus the Glory. Adelaide 2, Glory nil. Adelaide just did what they needed to, to do. What, what the job that had to be done, that's all they did. You can only beat the team put in front of them. Um, Glory is a young team, but the defending on the first goal was like touch football. They didn't want to – it was like I was tagged. They didn't want to – they were trying to sort of Hands maybe out. just pull something out of his back pocket. Yeah. And it was like, you know what, I know they're young guys and, you know, and I know Tony Sage has come out in defence of these guys. But, look, there's, there's certain things that I put down to inexperience. There's certain things I put down to, uh, you know, having a young side. But these guys – basically gave as good as they got right they had some good chances some good passages of play and there's important learnings here which i think as i said they will learn from maybe not this year but it will put them in good stead for next year or the year after but that defending for the first goal was absolute diabolical yeah it was look like i said they've got they don't have much to play for except maybe contracts next season and for some of these players some will get get a contract some won't um but they're not playing under pressure it's not there's no relegation um, it, it was an improved performance, but it was cruisy for Adelaide. Adelaide never looked like losing that football game. Uh, they had plenty of chances in the first half. Uh, Bernardo Oliveira, son of Cassio, he was he's he's a player. He's he's a serious player. He's, he's got, a baller. He's, he's, he's got some good. skill. He's very technical. He's he's good with the ball at his feet. I think he missed one early on in the game. He, he got in the box, cut one back, and then and then fired over. But um, nice classy finish for for his goal. Um, and then. We talk about young kids. Uh, Iran Kunda comes on at the end there, and the uh, human rocket launcher, absolute rocket. Like he couldn't, he can't hit that any sweeter. So the like, first goal, like I said, I was pretty cool that the defending was horrible, but the second you can't one, stop that. You there's can't nothing stop you can that. do about it, you and can't. it was late in the game, so it means for that. large periods the glory were good. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I thought it was a, a, a much improved performance um, for for no reward out of it, but that that goal at the end, you can't. How do you defend against that? He's he's so quick. And he just gets, you know, I don't even know if he was inside the box. Might have been just inside the box. And no keeper in world football saving that. Okay, the last uh, question I have for you before we move on to the last game, which was today's game, the Anzac game. Will Ruben Zakovic be given the reins next year? I'm going to say no. Okay. I, I just don't think he's, he's What do they need ready. to go for? 
I, I think they need they need an experienced coach, experienced Aussie coach. I don't know if they they look overseas. Um, you know, do they do they try and bring someone um, who who was Ange Postecoglou's um, understudy when he was at, at Yokohama? I think he's in in the J two now. Um, do they bring someone like that back, or do they go out and, and get a big name? I, I heard there was talk about Sven Goran Eriksson, um, which I I don't know how true that is, or if that's even Hopefully possible. Not. Hopefully not. But yeah, I don't know. Do they go out and and go big like that, or do they go to the MPL? Um, oh, I forget the guy's name, but a guy up in uh, in Queensland, Queensland coaching yeah. at Olympic FC. There's been talk about how good he is with with youth players. Um, do you give someone like that an opportunity as well? Yeah, look, I think it will be interesting. And moving to the last game, as I said, which was today's game, uh, the Anzac, only Anzac Day game, Raw caused big problems for the victory and required a Hamill header to cancel out impressive Parsons opener, but Brisbane deserved no less than a point. So it was a lost opportunity with a 1-1 draw, but I think that uh, the victory can consider themselves, if they will consider themselves lucky to walk away 4-1 winners earlier in the week. They were definitely a lot luckier today to walk away with one point. I think towards the end of the game, a, a mistimed back pass in the sloppy conditions. It was Ham- Hamill black back pass to Kelleher. Um, and, Le- and Lescano basically, if, if it... If it was I, a touch quicker, if it was... A, if I think was the wet weather, but also affected him because the ball skidded after they, he tackled him. Now, yeah. I think the pass wasn't spot on in any weather, yeah. and so it could have been punished. But I think, look, the Roar had definitely shown signs of improvement, but definitely missed opportunity for the victory who could have gone into second. Yeah, massive, massive chance for victory to to get into that second spot. Um, you know, they'll, they'll be they'll be very disappointed. They'll be very disappointed with that, the way they played, and um, and only coming away with one point. Uh, and you know, it could have been could have been none. R- realistically, uh, Brisbane had chances. I think Parsons had a, another chance in the first half. Um, O'Shea at the, at the end. Um, you know, he had a great chance and, and, you know, nine times out of ten, he probably puts that in the back of the net. Yeah, look, I think the next week or two will show whether, you know, getting four points from not a great showing for the week, is that a good sign? Or is it just covering up some, you know, some issues that you have? That you, yeah, you yeah. picked up four, but you basically could have picked up yeah. zero. But, you know, you bank the points when yeah. you can. But, uh, look, that we'll see how they go in the next couple of weeks. But that's the end of our Revolution Roundup. As we said earlier in the show, up after the break, we welcome uh, In The Know with Royo, our superstar mate, Roy O'Donovan, we'll catch you after the break. There you go. Up, uh, welcome back to the show. Up now is the time for In The Know with Roy O featuring our mates and uh, I suppose proven goal scorer, Roy O'D. G'day, mate. Welcome to the show. Hey, guys. How are you? Mate, how's, uh, how's it going? How's the lovely family? Everything going well with the O'Donovans? Life is good, mate. The sun is shining in Australia, living the dream. Can't complain. Beautiful. <laughs> Mate, uh, your team, Sydney Olympic, are currently sitting. Last time we spoke to you, uh, you didn't open your campaign too well. I think you lost your first game to Manly 1-0. But uh, since then, you've got back on track with four wins, uh, a draw and two losses, and are currently sitting in fifth. The weekend yeah. didn't go to plan, but uh, our main man, OD's bagged six goals. How's everything going there? Yeah, it's going well. Um, look, yesterday was a, a blip. We, we were deservedly beaten. But uh, overall, we, the process has been really good. We've been... Improving as a team, there's a really good bunch of lads. Um, and uh, yeah, as you said, six or seven games into the season, we're, uh, we're in a good place. And uh, yeah, look, I think we can, we can improve, get better, and hopefully come the end of the season, we're there or thereabouts. So tell us about uh, Wednesday. So Wednesday, there was a midweek penalty shootout loss to St. George. Uh, yeah. I think they're an MPL two, three, two, two, I two, think they are, yeah. two team. But uh, is that, uh, is that something that uh, you guys are going to lose any sleep over or is it probably just going to help you not derail from, a, from the season and just allow you to focus on that? Yeah, no, we won't lose any sleep about it. Um, we move on to the league. It makes the league more important for us now, pretty much. Um, we probably do without the extra midweek game. So, yeah, looking forward to the remainder of the MPL1 season and, uh, yeah, look, getting some success, hopefully, with, with, as I said, a great bunch of boys. Mate, I'm going to play some bets before the end of the season. I'm going to say you're going to get at least 20. So if we can find anyone, if there's any bookies or anything that you can see up uh, in Newcastle that are taking any bets, let me know because I'm going to put uh, (laughs) house car, the whole lot, even some of Josh's stuff I'm going to put on the line too. Uh, I won't tell him about it, but I just might put on the line without him knowing because I think, mate, 20 20 is minimum for you this year, the way you're going. Ah, well, thanks very much. I hope so. Uh, (laughs) As I said, you can score goals with a good teammates, and I'm lucky I've got really good ones. Hey, just before we get into a couple of the questions to get your expert opinion, tell us about uh, this charity that uh, we know that you're, you're, you're very passionate about and there's a walk coming up, I believe. Yeah, well, look, that's the Darkness Into Light uh, Foundation. Obviously, it's um, to do with you know, teenage suicides. 
uh, hence the darkness into light. You know, people go around with a dark cloud over them. So, uh, look, it's a great cause. Uh, they do it up here in Newcastle. They do it in Sydney. They do it in Ireland as well. And, uh, yeah, just get online, have a look. Darkness into light, whatever area. And uh, if you can do the walk, great. Donate some money, great. But uh, it's just bringing, you know, a bit of, um, you know, something to the foundation, really. Bring a bit of a notice to it because uh, it is very important, especially in today's society with... People struggle with self-esteem, especially with social media and, and lots of other things going on in their life. Uh, it's important that we care about people's mental health. Mate, spot on. And like I said, we'll check our schedules, but uh, there is a chance we might be walking alongside you and it'll probably be the highlight of our year as well as doing a good cause. I look forward to it. Thanks, boys. <laughs> just make sure the fans, I don't get stampeded. That's all I ask is <laughs> maybe we just put a safety barrier or something in between yeah, you yeah, and the fans so that sure. we uh, we can keep in one piece. You, you'll just have to worry about keeping up, man. That's, that's it, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> it, yeah. That is pretty true. Putting, is the, true. putting the football revolution brand everywhere. I love it. Love it. That's it. All right, mate. Uh, what do you got for him, VIG? Yeah, so we're moving on to, to a bit of football chat now. Um, talk, talking about the A-League men's competition and um, – which team do you fancy at the moment to, to get, take, go all the way and take the Premier's plate? Um, City is sitting on 46 points, yep. uh, Western United on 44, and Victory on 42. So for me, it's going to be one of the Melbourne teams. Um, but who, who do you fancy? Yeah, um, I think Victory today, if you've seen the results, I think Victory blew it a little bit today uh, against Brisbane. Uh, Brisbane were really good, one all draw in that game. So I think that's hampered them. So it's between Western United and Melbourne City. And I think with the distraction of uh, the Asian Champions League at the moment for City, I think Western United are in a really good spot. Um, big game this weekend for Western against the Mariners, who are on cloud nine after winning the F3 derby at the weekend. So uh, I feel if Western United can do the business this weekend, they'll be your Premiers this year. Mate, uh, talking of the game between the Raw and Victory today, I think uh, the Raw deserved at least a point, if not more. Yes, I do. I, I, and my mate, Jay O'Shea, had a really good chance in the 80th minute, which I would have put my house on him to bang that in the top corner. And it just kept rising, unfortunately. But uh, they played really well. They've got a young side there. Um, you take out Neville, Aldred and Jay O'Shea. They're, they're very young. And there's a lot of Queenslanders playing for them. So uh, hopefully exciting times for Brisbane. You know, the... They haven't spent an awful lot of money, but uh, they're competing with Victory, who have been one of the standout teams in the comp this year. So, you know, you've got to say fair play. Even even the back pass towards the end, I think it, uh, they tested the keeper out a little bit. Lascano was unfortunate to get in and pinch that uh, yeah. pinch that winner. But, uh, look, Brisbane, obviously, Holmes made a few good saves, but, uh, yeah, Brisbane definitely gave as good as they got. So uh, probably a, a bit of a warning bell for uh, for Popper, considering at the moment, if you want to be up there and you want to be someone who's going to win the silverware, you need to be taking care of teams like that, not, you know, basically get, getting a given to you, which they pro- basically did. Well, uh, yeah, well, look, that's football really, isn't it? I, if you, it's the timing as well of it. I think you can have all your – you can have your good days and your bad days, but at this time of year when they're, you know – Trying to go for Premier's play today was a must win for them. I watched them against the Jets live last week uh, and they were really, really good, really disciplined. They had a game plan, which is Tony Popovich to a T. They're very disciplined. They all play for as like as a unit rather than and as individuals, which maybe they suffered for last year. And, on, you know, on the counter-attack against the Jets, they were really good. Uh, D'Agostino scored a fantastic goal. Um, early on in the game Jets cancelled it out but they scored in the last minute and that usually is the kind of stuff that gives you the energy and the confidence to kick on so I was surprised today that they, they didn't kick on but it just shows you that Brisbane are you know are growing as a side every week as well you know so Alright so if we're, if we're riding victory off for the Premier's plate uh, mm. are we riding them off for the Grand Final as well are we going with a, a City or, or Western to, to go all the way? Well, you, look, you can't, you can't write them off because that's the thing. that The top six format, it brings everybody back into the equation. It brings Adelaide, Phoenix, Mariners. It brings them all back into the equation because two cup finals, really, to, to get there. So, uh, no, I'm not writing them style, off. Who's style, Who's style? It basically goes back to square one, whether you finish first or sixth, you know, obviously. Yeah. But who's style? And who do you think has players in there with the right temperament, you know, you know knockout, basically phase mm-hmm. sort of football? Who, yeah. who would you like to be on? Yeah, look, I'll, I'll be honest about it. On their day, Melbourne City are hard to look past, really. They've got uh, quality football players, international players. 
Um, you know, they've got the experience, the know-how. Uh, they've been there last couple of years. So you'd feel if they come back from Asia uh, revived that they will be there to, uh, to lift the trophy again. But Western United have built and uh, Victory have both built their teams on really solid defence. So they're going to try to make a half for the Naboos, Leckies and McLarens and when they do come up against them. So, uh, so it's going to be very interesting times. But as I said, on their day, Melbourne City have everything in their armoury. One quick question before we move on to the next one. So how does Melbourne City being away for so long? So by the time they get back from this Asian uh, Champions League first, first phase, they're going to be away for, what, two, three weeks or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. How does that affect their, their home campaign? Is, if results are going their way and they come back, they should be fine, or do you think being outside because the, the football is totally different? You're watching the Asian Champions League; the to- type of football is so different to what it is for Sydney. Obviously, not currently in the top six; it, it, it's not an, not an issue. But for a team like City, who were at the top of the table and they've got you know Western United and that trying to chase them down, is this something you see as a benefit for them or giving them a ch- recharge, or is this something that could derail them? As you said, yeah. Look, I, I don't see it derailing them. As I as I as I touched on, I still feel they've got plenty of experience and the psychology of having been there before. Is going to help them. It can work two ways of being away for a few weeks. If they're getting results in the Asian Champions League, which they did in the first game, and then last night they, they dropped the ball in the last minute, pardon the pun. Um, you know, it, it's confidence wise, it's going to have a, a little bit of an effect. But being away with a group of boys for two or three weeks can grow something special in the dressing room as well. So it might just reinvigorate them to come back. Um, after a bit of warm weather training, playing the Champions League, they might come back buzzing. Um, but as I said, they've got a bit of everything. They've got quality, experience, know-how, and they've got a good manager, you know, that seems to have his feet in the ground as well and, you know, won't be long whipping them back into shape if he feels like that they're uh, not pulling their weight. Brilliant. All right, so um, with, the, with the remainder of the season, uh, you know, looking at, I suppose, not only the Premier's Plate race, but also the grand final race, yeah. Who's the one player to watch? So who would you like to have in your team? Who do you think will be the difference that will make these teams that potentially may fall short? Who can who can rise up and lead their team to uh, victory? Who's the most important? Yeah, look, I had I think about this earlier, and as I just touched on, you talk about with Melbourne City, uh, when Lecky, Nabu are on form, obviously that's going to help the way they play, you know, the width and, and providing service to McLaren. Then you go, like, to Adelaide, Craig Goodwin, if he's on form, it's going to help them, but on his own, is he enough? So, seeing last night, their young, their young boy step up to the plate and score a couple of goals. That's exciting. But the one I was thinking last night, you know, outside the box was uh, Alino Diamanti because he's missed so much of the season and he's such a, a maverick player. I feel Western United are so, you know, solid and, and, and you know, really effective defensively. I feel like he could be a little key player for them. His experience is undoubted quality. If they can get him back, he could be he could be the spark that really pushes them over the edge, you know? Considering, you know, the last few years, they haven't been going so well. So he's kind of been carrying them lots of, lots of games. And so for him to come back, as you said, into a situation where they are travelling really well, all he needs to focus on is himself. Yeah, he could become a huge X factor and, you know, it could push the uh, Western United and Aloisi's team over the line. Absolutely. I mean... Look, they've signed well. Prijevic, as I spoke about previously on this show, I think is a really good striker. He's not the quickest, but he's got really clever movement. He, he's a kind of um, a really classy striker. You know, he's a good finisher. He brings others into play. But, you know, the likes of Diamante, there's not, there's not many of these kind of guys left that play with such personality. And he's a passionate guy as well. He's, uh, he's missed a lot of football this year. So he'd be keen. He'd be hungry to come back and prove a point. And... Uh, yeah, like as I said, he could be he could be uh, the asterisk next to their name at the end of the season. He could just push him over the edge. He just loves to win. He's, he's one of those players that, that loves to win. He's got that hunger hunger inside him. And, and with a solid back line now, um, that might give him the freedom to, to get on the ball and, and express exactly. himself and, and feed Prejevic as well. So Exactly, mate. That's, 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 that's very much it. And you know it well, being a defender yourself, uh, you know, it's, it's great to have a, a strong foundation back there. But ultimately, when, when the ball goes up the pitch, you want players of that kind of quality to, to hurt the opposition. And Definitely. Certainly, it's, certainly it's, always difficult. it's always difficult uh, when you've got to turn around and chase the ball because he loves playing those little diagonal balls in behind exactly. for, for the runners. He's very clever. He tries things that others don't. He sees things that others don't. You know, he's a former international for Italy, played the highest level everywhere. So I think 
us as all as neutrals at this point of the season. We, we, we'd all like to see him back in the park and playing some of his best football for uh, Australian football. Of course we do. All right, moving on then. We're, we're going to go talk about, a bit about the Champions League. Um, Madrid, City, Liverpool and Villarreal left. Mm-hmm. Who do you fancy? Yeah, look, I'm going to rule out uh, Villarreal, even though it's a terrific story. Uh, great to see uh, the smaller club up there, putting it to the big man as such. Uh, Unai Emery as well, he got laughed out of England and all over, you know, social media. He was kind of a, a meme for a long time and it's, it's, it's a great story. A really good football guy, obviously, very intelligent uh, tactician. And uh, it would be terrific if they could overcome Liverpool. It would be a great story, you know, for the neutral. But, you know, similar to the Premier League, I'm looking at Liverpool and Man City being, you know, you, you can't see them losing games. They're, they're that good, you know, but... Uh, Real Madrid uh, have been terrific. Uh, I think Benzema this season has looked a million, a billion dollars, I should say. A million dollars, nothing in football. A million no. dollars is you. Yeah. Just so you know. Just, it, yeah, a million yeah. dollars is Roy O'D. A million dollars is Benzema. A million dollars is Benz. That's that's the, yeah, a billion dollars. Sorry, lads. Sorry, that's my mistake. Uh, no, they, he has. He's looked terrific. Uh, 34 and, and, and looks, looks fresh as anything. Scoring goals, movement, terrific. Leading the team. Um, so, yeah. I feel if Man City can get over Real Madrid, then their name could be on the cup. But Liverpool, as we know, are, have been European specialists for quite a while now. So um, they'll feel that their name is written on it in some way, shape or form. So you're pretty confident that there will be good evening for Villarreal and Emery. So I would yeah. have thought you definitely have been keen on that, the fairy tale story, but you're putting an end to that now. And yeah, I, I do. Uh, Look, I think it's a, it, is a ter- it is a terrific story. Undoubtedly, we all like to see the underdog. Um, get on, but I feel like I think maybe they've run their course now. Well, they haven't really. They've picked up a lot of players that weren't wanted by other clubs. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, they've done amazing to get there. So if you had to uh, put, your, put your neck on the line, which way are you swinging? So, yeah, I, I, if Man City can get over Real Madrid, I feel like they can do the business. I feel, you know, against uh, Liverpool, I feel like Man City might suit them to play a team that they know very well in, in you know, uh, Jurgen Klopp's team. But uh, if it is, if it was a Real Madrid and Liverpool, uh, who knows? I I, I feel like Liverpool um, they have history in European competition, even when they haven't been one of the greatest sides on the planet. You know, you t- think about two thousand and five, six. They were a, you know, a top six Premier League team, but you know, the likes of Man United were really you know, driving on at the time. But um, yeah, there's been some great European nights at Anfield, and I'm sure there'll be a, a couple more to come. Very good. All right. Will that affect uh, who wins the Premier League title then? Yeah, well, look, I think this weekend is, is big. I think Liverpool have a very difficult assignment. They're away to the informed Premier League team this year um, since Eddie Howe has come in in Newcastle United. This, I think the run-in is, is crucial because, as I touched on, you look at Man City, look at Liverpool, and uh, you can't see them losing too many games. They're, they're that strong, you know? Any, any challenge that comes their way, they, they seem to be able to either win it comfortably, a la Man City at the weekend against Watford, or, you know, Liverpool grinded it out against Everton, 60 minutes tight, and then they eventually break the deadlock and they, they get home, you know, relatively comfortable in, in the derby. So, yeah, this, this weekend is big. Um, if Liverpool can, can't overcome Newcastle, I feel I can't see Man City slipping up. They seem to have a a little bit of an easier running. It's easier. No game is easy, but for what the quality they have, yeah. So, yeah, watch this space. If Liverpool can't get a result against Newcastle, I feel like Man City's name is uh, on the trophy. Hey, considering you're an ex-Premier League player, well, let's flip the table to the other side, and we haven't prepped you for this. Everton now sitting in the bottom three. So after Burnley mm-hmm. getting a 1-0 win against Wolves and Everton coming out and pretty much just trying to slow down the game and, you know, trying to waste time and do everything. So they never really put in a performance yeah. in the Merseyside derby. And so you can't really expect much out of the game. They may have pinched something, but they, in my opinion, didn't deserve it. What well, A club like that going down the first time ever in Premier League history, how, how do you sum that up? Yeah, I know. It's, um, it's sad. It's very sad because... Uh, you know, for a number of reasons. They're a huge club. They're a historical club. Um, but it's happened before. Look, we, we, we see Leeds, Man City have all spent time in doldrums. We've got big clubs down there now. Um, like the Coventry Sunderland. City. Have, you know, yeah, exactly. Derby County are, are down another division now again. And 
Sunderland, as we spoke about before, and the third. So there's a lot of big clubs. You know, it's so competitive in, in English football. And sometimes, you know, money gets you so far. But sometimes, uh, and I think Everton have spent plenty of money, by the way, just uh, things aren't right, obviously. And, and has Lampard come in a bit too late? I, I, I know what you're saying against Liverpool. It looked like they didn't play to win. They played not to lose, right? Um, and, you know, I can understand that too, that they're thinking, they're doing their analysis and they're coming up against the likes of Saleh, Salah and Mane, the form they're in, the goal scoring form. If they can keep them quiet and maybe nick one from a set piece, that would have been the chat. But as soon as Robertson scored, your game plan is done, isn't it? So, yeah, it could be a regret because I, the last few weeks I, I I saw some green shoots from Everton that said maybe, but as you said, maybe Burnley now look like they're the kind of a bit of a farm team heading into the, the closing stages, last five games of the season. So if Everton do go down, so potentially the yeah. way things are looking, a big game this weekend. So Everton play Chelsea uh, and what I think uh, they have, Burnley have Watford. So if the results went the wrong way for Everton there, they could be five points behind uh, with a better, go- uh, yeah, with an w- w- inferior goal difference, which would mean they'd need to win at least two more games than uh, Burnley on the run on in. If yeah. they went down, do you see a Pickford staying? Do you see a Richarlson staying? I know some clubs, you know, basically keep their players and they try and get back up the following year, but do you see them keeping a Lampard and those sorts of guys or you reckon this would be where you just get the broom and you just start cleaning out the the the, uh, the dirty the dirty cupboard? Yeah, look, I- I can see Lampard staying. I, I feel he. I feel he's genuinely in there. He, he realizes a big club, and he, and he knows it's a good opportunity for him to progress his managerial stock as such. Uh, but I feel like with the value that that's in football now, um, and players being you know looking after their own interests, their own brand. Pickford is England's number one. Does he want to be languishing in the second division? No, he doesn't. You know, Rick Carlson playing for Brazil national team is their starting striker on. Plenty of occasions. Um, he doesn't want to be hanging around. They, they all want to play at the top level. They all want to play even at a higher level than the Premier League. They want to be playing in the Champions League on a regular basis. And they'll have that confidence and that ego. So, and look, from a, a commercial and business point of view as well, it's a pretty expensive anchor to have around your neck coming out of the Premier League and having to pay these big, big salaries to players that um, aren't playing at the very highest level. So, yeah, I can see a lot of movement at Everton. But Lampard's been in that division with Derby County very recently, so he knows what's needed to get out of it, and he knows the kind of players that you know are available to him. So, um, and I'm sure if you're a player that's playing a good player in the Championship, you'll be attracted by playing for Everton and playing for Frank Lampard. You're spot on there, but Big O, because the thing is that uh, if they did go down at the expense of uh, of Burnley, someone like Nick Pope, who's sitting as the second or third keeper behind him, will now be a Premier League keeper and the number one keeper is a Championship keeper. So straight away, advantages to uh, Nick Pope and then you, lo- make a move. you lose your spot and then Absolutely. you maybe never get it back, you know, even if you do come up the following year. So, yeah, look, lots, lots of interesting... Uh, I suppose, scenarios to, to unfold in the league, not only at the top of the table, as you're saying, where you, you like Liverpool and probably City to win the league and also the Champions League, but also to see who who joins Norwich and potentially Watford. Their last roll of a dice is this week against Burnley, and if yeah. they get nothing out of it, then they can pretty much start looking at uh, championship merchandise next year. But uh, it's a bit harsh, but it's a reality. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, they've kind of been a bit of a yo-yo club over the last 15 years, Watford and on their day over the last few seasons, they've been terrific to watch. But uh, after getting such a you know a beating at the weekend by Man City, it's, it's going to be hard for uh, for Roy Hodgson to pick his boys up off the floor. You know they're looking at the table, they're they're feeling a bit tired and sore after getting uh, a good roasting from um, from Man City. So yeah, I think they've got they've got a lot to do really to stay up. I do have a quick one for you just before we let you go. So Fulham have been promoted and uh, and they're back in the cha- and they're in the uh, Premier League next year. Yeah. Mitrovic has been outstanding this year. Can they hold on to him or do you see one of the bigger clubs coming in and saying, hey, we've seen a guy now who scored a bag full last year in the championship and he's just been uh, you know, far and away superior to any other striker in the championship. Does someone come and grab him or Fulham just hold tight and say, we desperately need this guy to make sure we don't go up and back down again like we have the last you know, 10 years? Yeah, no, great question. Um, yeah, look, I think the hard part was keeping on to him in the championship, really, uh, because he's a proven Premier League goal scorer at Newcastle and Fulham. He's a proven international goal scorer, um, and he's a you know proper number nine. And 
to score 40 goals in any division in football is, is a terrific achievement. And uh, I'd imagine he's going to be very loyal. He, I mean, he's done the hard graft now in the championship and he wants to lead Fulham back in the Premier League again. Um, I feel like by staying there during the championship, he, he, he's shown that loyalty, which not many do in this day and age. And uh, yeah, look, I, I think it's a terrific story as well. And they're, they're, a, they're a good club as well, Fulham. You know, they won't be coming back up to the Premier League as any, you know, pushovers. Uh, they're obviously a very good side. And, Mitrovic obviously gets plenty of service, so he won't want to be running anywhere too soon when he's probably got two excellent wingers either side of him, setting him up every week. All right, mate. Look, we, uh, as, as per usual, we really appreciate your expert opinion. We love having a chat with you and we know you're busy, so we're going to let you go. But, uh, mate, we wish you all the best in the coming weeks with Olympic. Hopefully you keep uh, putting the goals in the back of the net and uh, get to 20 before long so I can get my collect. But, uh, <laughs> mate, we wish you all the best with the family too. We know the kids are growing up super quick and they're enjoying watching Dad scoring goals for Olympics, so that can continue for a long time. But, uh until we see you next time, mate, uh, we'll check our schedules. We'll see if there's some uh, room there for us to do the uh, light into darkness with you because we think it's an amazing cause and we think you're an amazing guy for doing that. So uh, hats off to you and kudos because it is something that uh, we are all very passionate about. But uh, until we catch you again in a few weeks' time, mate, all the best and uh, we'll check in with you again soon. Thanks, guys. Always a pleasure. Keep up the good work. Welcome back to the show. It's our uh, We're in the final stretch here. Our uh, weekly Tom Ahmed Award, I don't need to explain it why, I think everyone knows now basically why we called it the Tom Ahmed, uh, based on uh, a p- probably a combo between you and Tom Ahmed, <laughs> VIG, but uh, it's either a quality hit strike, quality piece of attacking brilliance. For me, there were some nice goals, but uh, one leaves the rest for dust, and that would be the human rocket launcher, Irakunda, with another stunning strike. Does this guy score average goals, or does he only score brilliant strikes every single only time? Only scores bombs. Only scores bombs. Um, I think we've given him this award earlier in the season as well, so uh, deserved winner. He takes it out again. There's there's nothing else that comes close. Maybe uh, Roderick Miranda's uh, flick goal for, for victory. Yeah. Um, Nice finish, but you, you can't go past um, Ibrakunda. 16, 16 years old. I I'm going to start calling him Ibrakunda. I think he could be the, like the line, the Ibra. Every single time Ibra scores a goal, that's why we've named it's our nice. European award the uh, Ibra Award. This is a, obviously the A-League. It's not the European football, but uh, Ibra Kunda, he just scores He's absolute brilliant. worldies He's every brilliant. single time the guy touches that, the ball. That goal is like on any stage, any football competition across the world, that is an absolute brilliant finish. So. And what I absolutely loved about it too was you looked at Carl Viet's face and he just smiled like, I've probably he's seen he's that 46 times in training. training. All yeah, all the time. time. All but the time. you don't get players converting that always into, into performances, matches, yeah. into matches. Course, like, yeah. Yeah, guys have yeah, a great show reel at training, yeah. There's plenty of players that are unbelievable at training. How many Ward Prowse's that, do you think there are at training? Contract. There's that's plenty of Ward Prowse's taking free kicks at training, but to actually do it when there's pressure on, there's a you know a game on the line, there's fans there and everything, the tension is, is very, very difficult. But, uh, yeah, for us, this week's Tom Ahmed Award, lots of uh, lo- nice mentions to some players around the league, but uh, this week it goes to Ibra Irakunda for his stunning strike uh, to wrap up the points for Adelaide United against the glory. So looking at this week's key games, Friday, victory entertain the Phoenix, as we've said, uh, and we, we, we discussed with Roy Ob huge game not only for the victory's chances of a top two but to make sure that uh, the Phoenix stay in there and keep away from the chasing pack and also a chance to show that they're not just uh, one week hot and one week cold so big big game for both teams uh, this week the Mariners and Western United is another cracker of a game I think this will hopefully for the Mariners fans consolidate their spot in the six they don't want to get in and slide back out again so okay. and then uh, Western United have a chance to go top of the league as well so that's don't that's a that's a massive for them um, a club last year who were really struggling a little bit and um, to come back this year and to, to be to even be in the top two is probably a, a bit of an over... If, the, if you said that at the start of the season, um, probably wouldn't have believed you. Maybe top six for them, but top two is huge. Um, so massive chance to... Well, these are both huge, b- b- two of the huge bright sparks in the A-League this year. Two yep. teams that, uh, like I said, have done exceptionally well. Uh, and played a really entertaining brand of football and have some absolute quality players. So really big game. If you're looking for me on Saturday, you'll know where I'll be. I'll be in front of the box watching uh, the Western United versus the Mariners game. And Sunday, a critical game for the Bulls at home to the Jets. So dropping two this weekend, they slipped out of the uh, the top six. They haven't been going great lately. The Jets, you think, would you know probably realise now that uh, it's it's almost mission impossible for them to get themselves into, uh, especially if uh, um, Pena gets hit with a suspension, which he probably 
probably will, considering it's his second red of the season. Means they'll be without their most creative sparks. So for them, you hope the Bulls would be up for this, you know, for this uh, game at home. But uh, maybe the Jets want to spoil their party and go. Well, last, last week our uh, finals campaign took a massive ding. Maybe we want to do, do the same and, and mathematically keep ourselves in contention. Yeah, look, it's it's a tough one to pick because both teams have been so inconsistent all season. Um, yeah, look, uh, I think I think MacArthur will probably be t- too strong in this one. I see them coming out with a with a victory. I see. Uh, I reckon the points will be shared here, so we'll see what happens next week on the show. But right. uh, if they've missed any of tonight's show uh, and, and missed watching the great Roy O or missed any of the interviews during the season or any of the episodes, where can they catch it, VIG? Yeah, they can catch us on uh, Football Nation Radio right across their platforms. Download the Football Nation Radio app. Uh, they can also catch us on Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts. I don't think this is tattooed on your brain. You're, you're the master at this now. I'm lucky well, I've if I can it, remember I've said them. it that many times, so <laughs> yeah, mate, so, something's sticking in my brain. Mate, like like at the start of the show, maybe next time I get you to do it in Greek, that, that might be a bit of a challenge for you. It might be all right. Oh, I even Let's had a crack at a bit of Greek the, the earlier on in the show. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> so, um, look, we'd love to thank Roy O for his uh, typical brilliance and uh, also making us look half decent. Uh, like I said, we'll try our best uh, in the coming weeks to keep bringing the big stars on. Unfortunately, this week we didn't have one, but uh, there's not many brighter or shining stars in the A-League than, uh, than the Roy O is, is on the football pitch. So uh, that's that's it for this week. But uh, look, plenty of games coming up, plenty of uh, things to fight for, whether it be a, a top two spot or a top six spot. Uh, hopefully we get Sydney FC and City back into the competition soon so we get all 12 teams. And I think uh, the double headers are all starting to dry up a bit. So hopefully it's just one game a week so we can see the best of the teams and not having to worry about double headers and travel and injury. But uh, look, until, we, uh, until next week's show... As we say, rise up and join the football revolution. Catch you then.